Good morning from Toronto. My name is John Kill, and welcome to another 10 by 10 series. In this series, it's called A Focus on Vietnam. I'll speak to 10 people, 10 experts, for 10 minutes on different aspects of living and working in Vietnam. And we'll ask them for some tips and hints about how to operate better or how to engage with companies in Vietnam or to set up in Vietnam. And today I'm delighted to have with me John Duffel. John is a food safety expert. He's, a, he's an industry veteran and also an agronomist. John, good morning or good afternoon to you. Good morning. Um, thank you, John. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, yes, yeah, I mean, you're right. Yes, I originally started my career as an agronomist, um, but uh, I suppose my specialization, I'm a fully trained biologist with specialization in crop production and crop protection. Um, but I've been working in the fresh fruit and uh, processing industries for the last uh, hmm, 30 years now. Um, my company themselves here in Vietnam, well, we're an agricultural technical consultancy business, but we also have an export department where we are dealing with the exports to, to certain countries from the products that we're helping growers develop here. Fantastic. So, John, what is the situation in Vietnam with regard to the domestic market for fresh fruit and, and vegetables from a producer and retailer perspective? What does the market look like, especially in context of, let's say I'm a foreigner and I want to know how do things operate domestically within Vietnam? Sure. Um, I mean, the domestic market is still very vibrant because there's a lot of domestic sales that, that are needed within Vietnam because of the population. Um, the majority of, of uh, sales are still through wet markets and street markets. Um, retailers as well here are developing their, their businesses, um, such as Big C and Co-op Mart and, uh, and, and, and Vin Mart and other businesses here. Um, however, their, their way of trading still operates with, uh, through traders. They are gradually moving over to a scenario where they are looking more to directly work with growers and producers and and people such as myself to uh, to develop their market and increase their technical uh, ability, to the technical awareness, and the and the benefit of the product through to the the consumer. However, it's still it's still very difficult for them to differentiate different types of produce within their marketplaces, retailers. So the only thing they really differentiate in is between say Viet Gap uh, certified product and say organic. Um, it's very difficult to then put another tier on such as Global Gap. Um, it's very difficult for them to un to know how to be able to market another tier within the uh, the marketplace here in Vietnam at the moment. But it's something that they're gradually looking at and, and gradually putting together. So it sounds to me like, John, that a lot of your work is in capacity building and joining the dots between the, the trading partners. Yeah, I mean, very much so. It's, it's, it's looking at regulation. It's looking at technical awareness. It's looking at responsibility. It's looking at the whole value chain as to how... Um, we can get from uh, a production unit all the way through to retail sale, whether it be here in Vietnam or it be uh, export and abroad. Right. Wonderful. And on that point of export, so are fresh fruit and vegetables tested, you know, in a laboratory before they're exported from Vietnam? How does that whole process work? Okay. Um, quite simple. The answer is yes, um, but it does depend on the final uh, destination or the final market or where that product has been uh, exported to. For instance, the EU, um, there is requirements on certain products, uh, dragon fruit, for instance, where uh, you will have to have a health certification. So it is a process of uh, looking at the actual lots and consignments that are being produced with from the farm through the factory um, before export, actually uh, third party assessment of that, to make sure that you're, you'll have the full traceability in doing that product and separate analysis and pesticide analysis according to the EU regulations. So those samples are taken and therefore independently tested. We then produce a health certification, we produce residue analysis, and that is then part, part of the port of entry requirement to allow that product to get cleared in, in Europe. Um, other countries such as Korea, Australia, Japan, uh, and the US, they have slightly different requirements in the fact that they need a post-harvest quarantine procedures. So in other words, irradiation for in, in the terms of the US or vapor hate treatment for the, for the other countries mentioned. Um, they look more at the, the post-harvest quarantine side of things, so pest control, et cetera, regarding to, uh, in comparison to regarding to MRL controls. However, 
MRL controls is certainly one of the things that is fundamental throughout the whole supply chain. You're exporting to a European business or a, 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 foreign, a, a foreign country. We need to be aware of the different regulations in each of those countries. And that is something which is actually quite difficult to ascertain over here as to the levels from each one. And it's, and it's very much very important that uh, understands, the, understands those points and gets that information because it's very much on a on a point-to-point -point basis as to the knowledge that's, that, is, that is there to understand what requirements are for each export market. Gotcha. Now, John, um, from memory, uh, I believe you you speak Spanish and you've yes. you've been traveling around the world uh, with for large retail when you were working in in the UK and in Europe. So you've right. been traveling all around the world, uh, helping to develop uh, supply routes uh, for for different commodities. Yeah, when you look exactly. now at Vietnam, what are the challenges for foreign buyers if they want to source some exotic fruits or vegetables from, from Vietnam? It's a very interesting question. I mean, um, Vietnam is very unique in its way of working, very unique in the way the, um, of the way the country works and the way the people work within the country. Um, it has its pros and cons, obviously, like any country. I think one of the biggest challenges is to do, well, I think there's about six points which I'd like to, to bring forward with those. I think the, the most important to me is transparency. So transparency of the supply chain, transparency of who you are working with, and you're actually working with the producer, or are you working with a group of producers? Often that area is, is gilded over a little bit because the Vietnamese culture, they always want, they, they want to please. They, they always want to be very much on a yes, we, we don't want to lose face. We don't want to say that we cannot do something. So in a lot of ways, they will always say yes to something, not necessarily understanding the final consequences of those actions. But certainly transparency and understanding your supply chain. So are you going through traders? Are you working with a PMO? Or are you working directly with a grower? That is fundamental in understanding where you are within the supply chain. Also, it's, it's again, this continuity of supply. Everybody is always very willing to please, but they will not necessarily say that, okay, we, we can't supply a container a week or we can't supply the volume you require because they don't want to seem that they're not doing the best job possible, right? So it's, it's to understand that continuity of supply. And if there is an issue with that continuity of supply, a way of being able to deal with that. Um, I think as well, it's always, it's always a difficult thing. There is no direct body here where we can go and get answers as far as the particular requirements for each country of export, for instance. So it's very difficult for a grower base, especially when you deal with uh, some growers, for instance, in the Mekong Delta, which is subsistence growers. And, and when you're dealing with bigger organizations, it's not so much of a problem, but it's a lack of requirements. They don't understand necessarily the requirement level that is needed. Um, and therefore, hand in hand with that is the, their final responsibility where it is legally and where it is quality wise related to the product. Because if there are legal issues for ourselves as Europeans, it's very easy to say it's very black and white. You, you've messed up with uh, a legal requirement. MRLs, for instance, is very clear. But then when it's a quality issue, it's a much more gray area to say who's the responsibility for that quality area. So it's something that you you have to have a very good agreement and very good knowledge. So you need to get the same mindset with the, with the people to understand what the end goal is, really, of what you're trying to do. And one of the big issues that uh, I think we need to be aware of is the, the financial expectations and differentiation between the Vietnamese culture and, and certainly what a European culture or an, an external foreign uh, country would understand as far as what they are willing to do is, um, with, with, with terms and conditions on contracts and that sort of thing. Because um, certainly the, with, with lots of growers that I've met, et cetera, their expectation is, oh, immediate payments and 100% upfront and et cetera, et cetera. And, and we know in the, in, in the world of trade and the world we do it, it not, cannot always be that, uh, that way around, right? There needs to be responsibility in the chain for the quality and the assurance of the produce going yeah. forward. Gotcha. Thank I think that's the difficult side of things. Yeah. 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 Now the time goes very fast, John. We're just at uh, ten minutes. So what I'd like to uh, what I'd like to ask you, just in in closing, what do you love about Vietnam? 
I, I, I certainly love the way that um, the, the produce that we can actually source from here is, is incredible. The quality is actually incredible. Um, we have to work on logistics and we have to get that better. But certainly what I, work, I love with Vietnam is the people and, and, and the people I've worked with. Uh, not the easiest place to work, but I've made some very, very good friends here and some people that are, are willing to invest in the market going forward and invest in the development for the business. What they want to see is Vietnam develop and Vietnam be able to export the produce and, and, and get rid of the old misconceptions of what Vietnamese produce is. And, and that's the important part. Wonderful. Yeah. Folks, there you go. There you have it. John Duffil, uh, Englishman living in Vietnam, food safety expert, industry veteran, agronomist. You can contact him via LinkedIn if you need to talk to John or if you're interested in sourcing fresh food or vegetables in Vietnam. John, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, John.